What is going on, Big Blue Nation? Thank y'all for checking out the UK Superfan channel. I am the UK Superfan, Will Turpin. Today, we're going to get right into the 2020-2021 UK basketball schedule. We're just three days away from Midnight Madness. Can you believe it? It's finally here. We're three days away from our formal introduction to this new basketball team, and we get to start investing emotionally in uh, players and learning all about them and their personalities. And And uh, Midnight Madness is such a fun night. Uh, it's always been a special night, and uh, we really look forward to it. Before we get to the Midnight Madness, over the next few days, we're going to uh, we're going to preview the season today, the schedule that it is. And yesterday, uh, the senior VP of basketball operations for the NCAA, Mr. Dan Gavitt, he held a media call yesterday, a Zoom media call. And we've got quite a bit to unpack there. So I think before we get into the schedule, we should, uh, we're talking about, basically uh, the NCAA is making preparations for the tournament right now. Uh, they're getting ahead of this thing. We're not going to get caught in a situation. I mean, they are firm that we're going to have an NCAA basketball tournament this year. Now, some of the, the changes that they've already started making, and not everything is set in stone, but it looks like the tournament is going to be housed in one city. Uh, I think that city is going to be Indianapolis. I think there's a really good chance that that's the city that it's going to be. Now, with that said... They're probably going to use seven or eight different gyms in the greater Indianapolis area, which could possibly even bring uh, Louisville into play. Uh, because when you start talking about putting 64 or 68 teams actually in one area, and, and they were very strong and adamant about saying this is not a bubble, it's going to be a controlled environment. And... They're going to try to host this tournament the safest way possible, and this is something that they've actually discussed and talked about uh, quite a bit over the last few weeks, and then we eventually got to this determination that uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this thing, we're going to put it in one city. They've already done a lot of recon on how many hotels are in that town, and Obviously, once you get that many people in one city, this thing is not going to have the t same type of schedule that we're normally used to seeing, like a Thursday through Sunday for the first uh, round, and then come back the next Thursday and get you know the Sweet 16 and, and the Elite Eight games played. But none of that has all been figured out yet. The only thing that has been figured out is a, a way to safely have an NCAA tournament, and they're adamant about having it. And the key is going to be flexibility. And from my understanding, there, there's great communication between the network, CBS, Turner, and uh, and the NCAA about exactly how this is, process is going to happen. So as I learn more about it, because I could sit here and speculate a lot on what I think is going to happen and what arenas I think are going to be used, but... But none of that stuff has really been set in stone. Just the outline plan of exactly the fact that we're adamant about having a tournament. And, you know, as we get into this schedule, you know, the fun stuff, you know, is this week. You know, we get to meet these players and everything. But we need to realize that this season won't be like any other season. It'll be the most different season. And when you look at the schedule, it's up here on the screen. Uh, one of the things that is different, obviously, is there's no exhibition games this season. Um, and the, and the schedule is also four games less. Typically, if you counted us playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the SEC tournament, and if we were able to make it all the way to the national championship game, that would have us playing about 40 games usually. This year, if we made it all the way to the national championship game, we would actually play 36 games. So it's four games shorter. Now, what this, uh, you know, we, as we get into this thing, uh, one thing, another thing that we need to really take into consideration is, you know, we've already got one conference that has completely uh, shut down all basketball activities. Uh, the Ivy League will not play basketball this season. And 
I think what will happen is, is during the course of this season, there will be a lot of canceled games, unfortunately. And they're already kind of preparing and expecting that. So falling in love with this schedule right here uh, as, as being the gospel of, of what we're going to play is, would be incorrect. Uh, it's very unlikely that we play this schedule out exactly the way it lays. So that's one of the things I wanted to do today was as we get ready and we get excited for this season, do note that they're going to try in every way possible to have a tournament, an SEC tournament, but most importantly, definitely a national championship will be crowned this season. But again, there's going to be a it's going to be a moving piece the whole entire year. Um, the schedule is going to be moving and 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 jumping around, and some of these games may be made up. The NCAA may or may not extend the season out. There's been a lot of chatter about adding a month to it. And that way, you know, if somebody only had 10 or 12 or 13 games played, that we could make up some of those games, especially as we get into the warmer months. I think everything is on the table. I think this year, unlike last year, where it all came on them so fast. I mean, basically we were at conference tournament time and there was no preparation at all. So it just, they just basically had to close everything down. And that was the end of the season. And we had no conference tournament or NCAA tournament, which was... You know, for a massive uh, sports fan, you know, it's in itself, not just a massive UK fan. I mean, the NCAA tournament is one of the fibers of, of, of really our, our country as a sports fan, uh, you know, of fans of sports in general. You know, I mean, I know people that don't even follow college basketball, but watch the NCAA tournament just because of the intensity and the... You know, these guys are still, you know, quote-unquote amateurs and really playing for the love of the game. So, uh, but, yeah, this year, you know, who knows how this schedule is going to play out. But we are going to go through it today. Uh, obviously, we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling the day before Thanksgiving next Wednesday. I mean, it's coming fast and furious. If that game is played, like I said, right here on the UK Superfan channel, we will have a, po a pregame show next Wednesday. Uh, where we will uh, really get in-depth with uh, the Moorhead State game as much as we can. Uh, early in the year, we don't know a lot about how we're going to play, how they're going to play, you know, but we will look at the rosters and at least, you know, provide some information. That way you'll have uh, some recon on on Moorhead State and, and know a little bit about some of their players and uh, and kind of their style of play before the game even starts. And then immediately following the game, I will be here live for a live interactive post-game show uh, following the Moorhead game that night. And we will break down everything that we saw and uh, we'll spend about an hour discussing it uh, live and you'll be able to interact with me right here on the YouTube channel with your comments i definitely look forward to that uh and you know and then again two days later this is going to be this is going to come fast and furious uh the day after thanksgiving you know and as part of this bluegrass showcase at rup we'll have detroit mercy and then uh two days later after that uh we're going and playing the richmond spiders then business sort of picks up a little bit as uh We'll play Kansas in that Champions Classic. Uh, now, I think, you know, uh, Kansas is ranked, I think, maybe, I think it's sixth in the AP and maybe fifth in the coaches' poll. So they're obviously, you know, as we know, they're, they're a perennial powerhouse every year. Uh, and then from there, we get a Georgia Tech. Uh, down in Atlanta for the State Farm, uh, the Holiday Hoops Giving, as it's being called. Uh, that's on December the 6th. And then uh, Notre Dame, back at Rupp on December the 12th. And then December the 19th there, we have UCLA. Um, and that, that game is played up in Cleveland. 
um, at the uh, former Gund Arena, what's now the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, where the Cavaliers play. We'll play UCLA there and uh, Johnny Juzang's new team. And I'm really going to miss that kid. I really like Johnny. I, I thought uh, he was starting to get his feet under him there towards the end of the year. And uh, just a really a dynamic shooter. And, man, I just I hated to see him go. And then the one that we all look forward to every year, um, uh, the day after Christmas, we get one last uh, Christmas gift. Uh, we'll go to the Yum Center. And uh, we'll play the Louisville Cardinals, and uh, you know that's always an exciting, uh, exciting time. And then right after that, we'll get into the SEC schedule. And, you know, when you look at the uh, the SEC schedule, you know I, I thought it was really interesting. Like the AP and the coaches poll, currently uh, they only have. There's two teams in the AP Top 25, Kentucky and Tennessee, and then I think the coaches poll, I think Alabama got in 25th. But, uh, you know, we lost a lot as a conference, and, and that we will definitely do a conference video breakdown. That will be coming in the upcoming days where we'll get more detailed into uh, all the teams in the SEC. We'll do a thorough Southeastern Conference uh, breakdown and uh, really dwell deep into uh, you know what we could possibly forecast, but like I said, this conference did lose a lot of uh, a lot of pieces. I mean, we lost a lot of great players. Uh, as well, I mean, if you just look at UK, I mean, we lost the whole roster. I think Keon Brooks was the only guy that came back that played any minutes at all, and uh, so you know that is what it is. But uh, that seems to be the case for a lot of the. SEC, with the exception of Tennessee, uh, you know, uh, you see, uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. the Tennessee games aren't until February. That's probably good for Kentucky because uh, Tennessee, I think, is, uh, they're going to be a handful. I mean, they returned in four starters, and then they put a, a top five recruiting class on top of that, and they got two guys that are, that are possibly one and duns to go with four returning starters. They got a certain kid down there that wears a headband that we won't mention any names for on today, but uh, he was a handful last year, and, and I'm sure he'll be uh, equally the same this year. Uh, I was looking through, uh, I was trying to see if any of those other non-conference teams were ranked real quick here, or what they were ranked. Because like I said, I know Kansas was sixth, and... Let's see if I saw Georgia Tech or any of those other teams in there. Let's see. Let's go over to the coaches poll here real quick. Just doing a little look-see here on this and see. Yeah, Alabama gets in 25th in the SEC, obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really Kentucky, and uh, I don't know how good Georgia Tech Notre Dame is, but, like, we're going to dig deep. Uh, there will obviously be a pregame show before every game, so we'll, we'll get you prepared for each team. Hopefully there will be some tape you know, uh, out there so we can start seeing kind of what some of these teams look like. But the the first three games uh, against Moorhead, Detroit, and Richmond, uh, you know, obviously we're going to be, you know, we'll probably have a lot more talent on the floor than those three schools, and it will be more or less um, – a chance for our kids to just get their feet wet, really, before we play Kansas. Uh, and, you know, and I think, you know, UCLA, I think UCLA's pretty good. What were they? I think they, I thought they were ranked. I swore, yeah, they're 21st in the coaches' poll. And let's see if they're in the AP as well. Yeah, 22nd in the AP. So, that they are at least garnering some respect. But the rest of these schools in the SEC, uh, you know, as you go down through here and really unpack it, uh, you know, playing uh, on January 16th, uh, January 9th at Florida. It's always tough to play at Florida. I think Florida is going to be better than what everyone else thinks they are. 
I look forward to doing a team breakdown of them uh, over the next few days when I do the SEC preview uh, because I really think that there's a possibility that they're a sleeper in this conference. Then we have the SEC Big 12 Challenge. That, that, that That's the one that I really am thinking, you know, when we get into the end of January, we're really going to have an idea as far as obviously what the teams look like. But then we're also going to have a good idea as far as how much COVID has affected the schedule. And that by this point, we're going to see, you know, if games are getting moved around, rescheduled. Like I said, this schedule here, you may be able to wad it up and throw it in the garbage in two or three weeks because it just may not be relevant anymore. Uh, but easing on down through here, uh, after the uh, SEC Big 12 Challenge, then we'll go and play at Missouri, and then at home against Tennessee, at home against Arkansas, and at home against Auburn. That'll be another three games in a row at home. And then we will go down and play in Nashville at Vanderbilt. And then also three days later, we'll be in Thompson Bowling to play Tennessee. And we start to get to the end down here uh, at home against A&M, at home against Florida. One more road trip to Oxford for Ole Miss, and then it's the SEC tournament. And I really hope that the SEC tournament gets played this year. And I hope that fans are able to attend. And I hope that we're not talking about viruses or any of that stuff anymore by the time. That could that would be a dream situation. Nashville is one of my favorite cities in, in anywhere. And it's just such a blast. And then when you combine, uh, I mean, I've got so many friends that I've made down there over the years. Uh, that play music down there or that, that are from Kentucky that have moved down there that play music. Uh, so, I mean, Kyle Fields, Dylan Carmichael. I mean, there's so many of them down there that are good buddies of mine. And it's so awesome to go down there and listen to music and be able to double dip and have the, uh, in, the SEC tournament down there. So I really hope that we all get that this year. And, and really, I hope that, that all this stuff is, 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 is moved out and we're just – you know, hopefully back to living some sort of a normal semblance of life. That's that's all, that's all we can hope for at this point. And then, you know, after this SEC tournament down here, uh, you know, that's when, you know, we'll start uh, embarking on the NCAA tournament and if it is going to be in Indianapolis. And, and from what I understand, you know, it could be a situation where, like, some of these teams will be coming in and, and maybe just be in there for like three or four weeks until it's done. I mean, there's a whole lot of, uh, uh, I think there's a whole lot of uncertainty as far as, you know, exactly how all that's going to play out. And I think as the next few weeks come and go, I think we'll understand more and more of exactly what the postseason will look like uh, for everybody. And, and like I said, I'm just super excited. Uh, we We've got, you know, Midnight Madness is just a few days away, and it. I think that as important as Kentucky basketball is to to this state, I really think it's time for us to, uh, as a state, just maybe embrace this basketball team and and try to take our minds off of all the craziness that's going on out in the world and, and maybe let that be a little bit of escape. And I, I really, truly hope that that's what happens. I really do. I hope we're able to start moving on uh, with uh, some level of normalcy, <laughs> I guess you could say, if that's possible. But, uh, you know, like I said, we've got we've got basketball. We've got, we're, Friday, we're going to meet this team. Uh, we're going to get to know them. We're going to start getting to know their personalities and, and uh, that's a really cool thing for all of us. Uh, uh, this year, uh, it's probably not as intense as it has been in past because so many people are are uh, affected by uh, COVID-19 uh, in so many different ways. So, you know, hopefully this does provide some of us with a little bit of an escape. And hopefully... Uh, you know, I can make some quality videos here to get you guys ready for each one of these games. Uh, I do appreciate everybody's support over the last 24 hours. It's been really cool. Uh, 
you know, I have to give a shout out to one of my good buddies this morning, probably my best friend in the whole world, Matthew No. This morning, uh, I had a phone conversation with him, and man, he was so excited about this for me, and it just it got me pumped up to to get ready to to do this video. So I mean, it was just. It was just a really cool thing and a, and a great little moment we shared on the phone this morning. And uh, I'm so blessed uh, for his friendship. And uh, yeah, thanks guys a bunch for for everything over the last day of uh, as we kick started this channel. And I look forward to providing you the best uh, UK content that I possibly can over this uh, upcoming uh, weeks, months, and hopefully years <laughs> if we're lucky. Uh, but again, I appreciate it a bunch. Uh, go ahead and uh, hit the like button. If you don't have a YouTube account, because I know a lot of you may have clicked a link uh, off of social media or something to watch this, uh, it just takes a couple of minutes to download the YouTube app and then uh, you know put you an email and a password in and then you have an account. Once you have an account, then you can hit the like button, and uh, which is a really good thing for us with the video because it gets more eyes on us. Uh, the more likes we get, uh, it, it affects that YouTube algorithm and uh, it makes makes it send it to more people to watch us. Uh, and then if you hit that subscribe button uh, over there, you know that that goes a long way to help us as well. And then uh, if you hit the little bell at the end, then you'll have everything covered. And and at that point, you'll uh, you'll get notified every single time a new video is posted to the UK Superfan channel. And any time that we go live, it'll it'll notify you that we're going live. So I appreciate everyone's support. I hope everybody out there has a great day, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow.